What's going on guys, it's 304 Tech Movement here. I'm super excited to get this video out to you today. We're gonna be talking about this beast that my friend and I made. He did a lot of the designing. I did a lot of the making, 3D printing, things like that. As you can tell, we got you know two on either side of me. We're gonna talk about what makes this thing work. This is a fully manufactured hovercraft. We had to use this for a class we took last semester, manufacturing processes lab. We've got a ton of different processes going on in this hovercraft. These white parts you can see right away, automatically 3D printed right here. We've got some vacuum forming, the actual body was vacuum formed. We have some soldering to create the electrical harness. We also had to CNC a part to hold the servo motor on the back. That's what controls and gives these, these guys back here the ability to go side to side to turn. Lastly, we laser cut a piece of foam board to basically give us the bottom with these holes. We put a skirt on it so it blows up a little and gives it some good flight as it's going. Not really a flight, more so air. You know, I guess it is a hovercraft, not a plane. So today we're gonna jump into how this thing actually works and how the different processes chosen and parts for each process affect the way it works. So let's get right into it, guys. There are three main components that 3D printing was used for on our hovercraft. It's the pieces that hold the drive fan, the thrust fan, and then also the attachment that connects the rudders to the fan that, that moves the hovercraft and propels it forward. These parts were chosen to be 3D printed because they needed to be a unique shape. So we wanted to be able to design these parts in CAD, export it as an STL, and then pop it into a 3D printer. We actually ended up printing around 20% infill for the parts just to make sure that they didn't weigh the hovercraft down. That was enough and it still gave it some good durability so we haven't had any issues with them. Additionally, the soldering was used to create the electrical harness for the hovercraft itself. So we soldered together different connections that allow both of the motors to be able to connect to one power source, which is the battery that we have attached to the hovercraft. We also use vacuum forming. So vacuum forming was very, very important because it allowed us to take a shape that's normally solid, form plastic around it, and then have a hollow area underneath. So this was really cool because it gave us the overall shape of our hovercraft, but it kept it very, very lightweight. In terms of the CNC, we actually didn't want to have to use this part for the hovercraft because it was a little heavier than the piece of foam board that we were using, but it was part of the criteria for the project, so we decided to make it the piece that held the servo. Lastly, we'll talk about the foam board. This was chosen as the bottom of the actual hovercraft that attached to the main piece that was vacuum formed. Basically, a bunch of holes were cut out into it, and then actually we used a, a, a thin layer of tarp to attach to the bottom of the foam board and go over top where the holes are. So the foam board is actually is what allows the air to pass through the bottom into the skirt, which then blows up and gives it a little bit of a, you know, which then gives it a little bit of a hover capability. All these parts, obviously besides the CNC one, played a very crucial role in how the hovercraft worked. It allowed us to still have a lightweight design while still having the ability to create unique shapes that we needed to and making sure that we were able to connect one power source to both of the motors. It's not a manufacturing process, but it's an important aspect of how the hovercraft works. The servo motor that we use was used to control the rudders. By simply rotating an analog stick on the remote left to right, easily change the direction of where the hovercraft would go. The thrust fan is the one that's horizontal and parallel to the ground. This is what would cause separation when it would start spinning from the hovercraft to the ground, giving it an essential float so that it could hover in place. While the thrust fan is running, the drive fan can be used to propel the hovercraft forward and the servo can then change the direction of how the hovercraft is turning. The goal of this project was to complete a race course that our instructor had set up in at least twice the amount of time that his hovercraft could complete it. Luckily we did that, our hovercraft had about a time of 35 to 40 seconds for each of our laps which easily beat what we needed to get to under 60 seconds. All the processes and pieces that were chosen for each manufactured part helped us achieve this by having a lightweight, but also durable and easily maneuverable design. Here's a few quick clips and pictures from assembling the hovercraft, testing, different things like that, that I got from one of my classmate and I were putting it together. Hope you guys enjoy. Big shout out to my boy A. Oliver for the design of the hovercraft.
So guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. This was something just to kind of talk about the different processes and approaches involved when you're designing something from scratch. We had to completely design the hovercraft on our own and then decide which parts would be used for each process. We think we chose the right ones, but it does show you that there's many different iterations it can take to reach your final product. If you're wondering why there was a marker on the side of our hovercraft, it's because we still had one more iteration to really perfect our hovercraft. We actually had to add that marker in order to account for the offset weight which would pull it one way. Even though adding a marker on the side maybe isn't the best engineered way to do it, in a last minute situation like it was with us, it got the job done and got us the grade we needed on the project. I really hope that you guys enjoy this glimpse into what it's like to design something from scratch and all the different resources and things you have to have to be able to do this. If this is a project you're interested in, I'm gonna have a link below with a list of all the stuff that we use in the project, as well as a link to Thingiverse for the models of our STL files for the hovercraft itself. You can attempt to do this with 3D printing all the parts, but this may be a little harder because of how lightweight things like vacuum forming and all that allowed us to have the hovercraft. If you're interested in manufacturing your own hovercraft and you're in high school or college or you know wherever you are, try to find people who have these machines that can help you do it, a laser cutter, the 3D printers. Go online and buy a basic soldering kit. Really empower yourself to be able to do these types of projects. They're super fun, interested, and they're very rewarding. As always guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed a quick glimpse of what it's like to be an engineering student, some of the projects you may have, and it's just a really good glimpse of things you could also do in the real world. You know, maybe you're not gonna be building hovercraft, obviously, but a lot of the design choices and things you have to do for this project are similar things you have to do when you're designing something in real life that people are gonna be using. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe below. As always guys, thanks for watching and have a great day.